back to my very first ongoing let's play of the very first Siberia GOG version modded and all that good stuff. Uh, we are now in some shrine in Comcalsgrad. And yeah, it's a little spooky, but we will press on forward. But having said that, if you are enjoying the series or the channel, I would love if you clicked on those sub and like buttons. Having said all of that, what do we have to work with? Is that to go back outside? Yeah, I don't think we can actually do very much in this first room. Hmm. I hope this wasn't too long ago because Helena looks a little old already. I hope she hasn't like died of age or something. Got a mirror and table. Ah, we have a scrapbook. Young Helena Romanski's crystal clear voice moves amateurs and professionals alike. Gathered for the ninth Wadeur Festival in Brussels, the young Russian soprano was the revelation of the event. She is an exceptionally talented singer, and at the tender age of 20, Helena looks to have a very promising career ahead of her. All right, but how long ago was this? Helena Romanski's finest numbers are collected here on this golden disc, millions of copies of which are being sold around the world. The Voice. Helena Romanski. Oh, that's probably in uh, Konkolskrad. Comrade Helena Romanski sings for the people. Her series of recitals with the piano performed in the factories of our great republic. After Kiev, our diva arrives at Konkolskrad. Ravishing Helena is seen here with the factory director, Comrade Borodin and several admirers. Helena Romanski's success in Europe is assured. The great Helena Romanski, our nation's glory, appears and triumphs every night on Europe's most famous stages. Following from Milan, Paris and, Paris and Vienna, Helena Romanski gave an exceptional recital in which her voice was even more powerful and moving than ever. Helena Romanski at, at this point is at the peak of her artistic career, and her recitals that year are exceptional. The high point and testimony to this greatness is her unforgettable interpretation of Rigoletto, sung with her great friend, the Russian tenor, Frank Malkovich. Let us not forget that the latter has recently decided to pursue his career in the United States. Huh. Yesterday evening, adoring crowds filled out the Bolshoi to say their fond farewells to Elena Romanski, their diva, making her last ever public appearance. Romanski revolutionized lyrical artistry and her name has already passed into posterity. Through the well of emotion, her fatigue and illness, she merely managed to utter a tearful thank you. Illness? That's not good. Not known at this address, return to sender. Come call scratch, June 15th, 1997. Dear Helena, pray forgive me such familiarity of tone. I have written to you so often and for so long now that I feel I have come to know you intimately through my correspondence. I hope if my previous letters have reached you that you share this feeling. I am writing to you at this address for the 112th time. Hope that one day you will return there and you will find one of my letters. This one maybe. I can only hope. It's just that I have so much to say to you, so much to share. My work progresses well. As I wrote before, the hardest part was to put theory into practice, but I am gradually finding solutions to the problems and have managed to add a whole host of fine adjustments. 
The grand organ is now nearly complete. I can't wait for you to see it, madame. Uh, madame, I have transformed my factory into a crown, and I hope that you will be its jewel. It is a magnificent stage, one worthy of your talent and beauty. Helena, I've been so close to you. You and you alone are all I think about. The more time that goes by, the more certain I become that one day you will visit me in this factory that is dedicated entirely to you. I have immense hope in my heart, and I'm awaiting your acceptance of my invitation. Yours in faith and devotion, Sergei Borodin. Dude, I don't want to help this, like, mad dude. He's clearly uh, the type of fan you do not want. He's very much has a fixation on her. Um, I hope we can backstab him and give him nothing. Um, he seems cray cray in all the bad ways. Did we have anything more to do in here, though? Yeah, I'm doing the old adventure gaming trick of hovering and seeing if there's any more objects. I don't think there is. No. Okay, so... So what did we actually find out? We know that he has written a disturbing amount of letters that never actually reached Helena. And we also know that she is retired. It seems this monorail is controlled from somewhere else. Yeah, we cannot use that. We do know that Hi, Mom. Kate! What? Have you seen the time? Why are you phoning me in the middle of the night? Oh, sorry, Mom. I forgot about the time zones. Did I wake you? Um, well, of course you woke me up. I, I was sleeping deeply, too. I've simply got to get my beauty sleep. I've got an absolutely crazy day tomorrow. I'm sorry. It's just that it's real important and urgent. I haven't got a lot of time. Well, if it really can't wait till tomorrow, Munchkin, Come on, tell your mommy what's up. Uh, no way I'm calling Dan for you, if that's what you want. Mom, listen, please. I seem to remember you're seeing a Marovich or something like that at the moment. No, 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 no. Malkovich, Munchkin. Frank Malkovich. Yeah, right. So, but he's an opera singer, right? That's right. They say he had the finest voice of his time, my dear. Imagine that. That's just great. So then he must have known a famous singer called Helena Romansky. She's Russian, too. Please, if you can ask him if... Listen, honey, if it's stars you're after, Frank knows them all. I'll just wake him up and let him tell you himself. You mean he's... Frank, do you know this song, this woman named you? Oh, you do? Oh, Kate, listen, you're still there. Frank tells me he did hang out with a Romansky once, but it was platonic. You know those singers. She's a great soprano. Great. Does he know where she went? Does, does she still sing? Where does she live? One second, Munchkin. Do you know? Oh, oh. Frank says she was very ill and she withdrew from circulation. Really? Oh, what is... Oh, oh okay. Um, she went to rest in some spa somewhere. He thinks it was called Arrowbad, but it was 15 years ago and he's not sure. And well, honey... When Frank wakes up, he always takes a little bit of time to get going, you know. Thanks a bundle, Mom. And Frank, too. You're both fantastic. Love you both. And thanks again. Catch you later. Huh. Actually, I didn't realize we could do this. But that makes it so much easier. So th thank you, game, for doing that. Also. Hey, we got Errol Bad. Uh, I think now we can 
I don't want to do this. <laughs> I really don't. Maybe he'll give up. Director. Ah, oh, it is you, Miss Walker. Director, I think I know where Helena Romanski is. My God, you have found Helena? That is fantastic. From my research, Helena Romanski is living in Arlbad. Arlbad? Helena Romanski is in Arlbad. You know the town then? You know where it is? Of course. It was a famous spa resort. In its heyday, Arlbad welcomed all the big wigs of the regime. To be granted a stay there was a real honor. Today, the honor has gone, along with all the generals and colonels, all washed away with the sea. It sounds like a good place if you need to take it easy or convalesce. I think Madame Romanski would be happier here. I think she'll prefer the peace and quiet here. The perfect tranquility of our little town. Why don't you come with me? After all, you're the person in the best position to convince Helena Romanski. Unfortunately, since my accident, I seldom leave my office if I can avoid it. And it is not wise for a director to leave his city now, is it? How can I get to Arlbad? There is one way that you can. Here, in the city, there are no suitable vehicles left. But that drunk old fool living up there, he'll have something. What drunken old fool? You mean you're not alone? What's up there? You mean you haven't noticed the space compound on the plateau? There's still some pathetic old soldier guarding it. But he's more interested these days in reaching for another bottle than reaching for the stars. And you think this gentleman could have a vehicle for me? I haven't the slightest idea. If you catch him on a good day, then maybe. But good days for him are far and few between. I wish you luck. How do I get up to the space compound, then? There is a monorail that leads up to the Cosmodrome. When you are inside, I will activate the automatic pilot. What makes you think this lady is going to come back with me? You're a lawyer, are you not? No doubt you will be able to plead my cause brilliantly to her. I remember you saying that you didn't know Hans Varlberg. It's strange because there's a photo in your museum with a man accompanied by Helena Romanski and yourself. And that man looks just like Hans Varlberg. And so, does this prove that I know him? I think you have forgotten that only several years ago this city was swarming with people. Do you think I actually knew every employee by their first name? No, of course not. Uh, but the man is holding hands with Helena, so I just imagined that maybe... Just imagined? Yes, you were. Imagining things, my dear. You have a mission in hand, Miss Walker. Pray, concentrate on it. Yeah. Let's... No, we have this. You know, I could get there ten times quicker if you gave me my automaton's hands back. Then I could use my train. Out of the question that I tamper with my pianist now. Please understand. There are still one or two finer adjustments that I must make before Helena arrives. Well... Whatever. Okay, I'm going. Wish me luck. I am counting on you, Miss Walker. Unfortunately, that is true. So I wasn't sure if he was a... Hello? Did I wake you up? I can't sleep at all. This whole business just keeps turning round and round in my head. What business, Dan? But Kate, that argument we had, have you forgotten? I really need to talk about that again. 
Oh, you know, I guess we were both a little high strung, that's all. But don't sweat it, okay? Yeah, sure. Getting carried away never solves anything, does it? I must say, I felt really dumb when I hung up. Really? Yeah, I left the door to my office open and I was convinced everybody around heard me. Ah. Uh, I'm so embarrassed, Dan. Please say I'm sorry to your colleagues from me. It doesn't matter, honey. Promise me that you will never put me in that state again. You're usually so delightful. I have the impression that this journey is putting more than distance between us. Well, it's true. I'm living a whole load of new and amazing experiences. Okay, I see. And I still no Hans Warlberg? No. Keep me posted. You know how important you are to me. Hurry home, huh? I'll try. Big hug, Dan. Yeah, I've said this before. Seeing how smart Kate is, she should really just get rid of that mm, horrible dude. He seems like a total, total load of garbage. Can we go in here now? Nice. I don't think there's anything over here. Hello? Kate! Oh, that you? How are you? Olivia! Great, just the right person. Look, have you heard of Helena Romansky? Uh, no. Is she some Russian fashion designer? <laughs> no, she's a singer. I'm going to be meeting her soon. I've just got to find a way of reaching Arlbad. Can you imagine how lucky I am? Not really. Well, what relations this singer got with the toy co-case? You sure you know what you're up to, Kate? Uh, you sound really different, like you're changing or something. Look, it's like this. If I'm going to get to the end of my journey, I've got to link up this singer and the director of the Comcalsgrad Industrial City. Don't worry, I know exactly what I'm doing. Why did you say that I've changed? I don't know, just an impression. You sound more sure of yourself, like stronger, more confident. And that's a problem? There you go. Just takes one word and you're up on your high horse. I'm beginning to see Dan's point of view. It's getting harder and harder to back you up all the time. What does that mean? Well, it means that I had a drink or two with Dan because he wants to talk. He feels a bit lonely, you see? And what's he been telling you? Nothing. He just has the impression you're slipping away from him. He can't see where you're coming from anymore. Like, we went to the movies the other day and he said that you would have loved the film, but I told him that... You mean you're dating my fiancé? No! no! Not dating Kate, just propping him up while you're away. All in a good cause. I can keep an eye on it for you at the same time. What would I do without you? Oh, you're jealous. Well, that's a good sign. That means you want him. Now that's what you pleased to hear. You seeing each other again soon? Tomorrow night. He invited me to dinner at the Goldberg. You don't mind, do you, Kate? No, no. No worries. Look, I've got to go, Olivia. Take care. Perfect trade would be for her to just let her garbage friend date her garbage fiance and they can be off being pathetic together. Best solution. Wow, this is something. Um, what do we have? We can go up there and I'm starting to think that's kind of all we can do. Okay, we have two paths we can go here. Also, this place is kind of cool looking. Maybe it's just one place. No, I think there's one up the stairs and one 
into whatever this is. Okay, let's start with this. No, even more choices. Okay, up the stairs we go. This is not doing well anything at the moment. Hey, we got some <laughs> quite a few bottles. Oh dear. Is this the drunk soldier? Excuse me. Sir, uh, sorry to disturb you, but you who can you hear me? Three, two, one, contact, and we have left off. Oh, holy mother, a dame, a, a pretty dame on the launch pad. Uh, please, no need to worry, sir. Just do stay calm. I just want some information. Watch what you're doing, sweetheart. We ain't got no information, no strategies, no plans to tell anyone anywhere, anytime. Military regulations, you think it may be? My name's Kate Walker. I'm a lawyer from... I mean... I'm a bit lost. And I guess you know this place. The bar is Charoff, at your service, madam. Can I offer you something from the bar? No, thank you. Tell me. How long have you been here? For as long as it took for you to come along, Sweet Pea. <laughs> Don't think I've been lonely. I got a bottle or two here. Keep me company. You're a soldier, aren't you? Ex-cosmonaut? Hey, honey, that's all in the past. Hell, let's talk about today. Let's have a drink. Now that's an order, soldier. Yet yeah, we're not a soldier, sir. Uh, please. Can you try and get a grip? I must absolutely find a way out of this industrial complex. Jeez, me too. I've really got to get out of this dump, but not before I've had a little drink. Here, yeah. get your pretty little lips around this. Vodka, tell me what you think. Do you have a vehicle to lend me? I think I'd even test one of your rockets right now if I had to. Toast my rockets. Hey, pretty dame, I'll drink to that. Now, just a minute, we gotta need a special bottle for this special occasion. Something to blow you away. Three, two, one, contact, and we have liftoff! Okay, that's enough. What was that? Did you say something? Are our female comrades revolting or what? <laughs> uh oh trouble on its way. <laughs> Bottoms up! Power to the babushkas! Oh, dear. I heard that maybe you could lend me a vehicle or something? A vehicle? <laughs> All our vehicles were picked up and shipped out to the borders years ago. General's orders. I say, let us raise our glass to this finest soldier this country's ever known, little lady. I don't mean to offend you, but I'm not in the mood for a drink right now. And you'll live to regret it to your dying day, sweetheart. To your health, while you have it. Yeah, okay. Does the name Hans Varlberg mean anything to you? Kars... Berg. Uh, of course I know that name. But sorry, it's been a long time since I've seen something like that around here. Varlberg. He's a person. I'm looking for him, and I think he might have come by here a few years ago. Well, in that case, let us raise our glasses. To this brave man and his very good health. Okay. <laughs> I like how he always arrives at the bottle. Like, no matter what we're talking about, that's that's where he's going. I came here by train. 
But I've got this mechanical problem. I had to leave the train down in the industrial zone. The director down there told me you were here. Aha. Borodin? That dumb traitor. I tell you, he's gone over to the enemy, over to the dark side. It's terrifying, the darkness. E eating out his brain. <laughs> the jerk. <laughs> That's maybe going a bit far. He is a little eccentric, I'll grant you that. But when you live on your own, cut off from the world for so long... It... His brain's gone A-W-O-L, I tell you. There's no darkness in my brain. I've got a cure. See? My secret antidote. Go on, ha have some. It'll stop you getting a cold. I don't think I'm in a high-risk category, but thanks anyway. So many birds nesting around here. What attracts them all here like that? Ah, uh, dumb birds. But at least a bird don't get bored, does it? See, they can fly. Them birds, geez, they can fly. Sounds like you're jealous of them. Well, maybe you're just right there. Because sometimes I like to let Soyuz loose and watch him circle for hours on ends. The birds, they crap themselves when they see him coming. Don't stop him coming back, though. Soyuz? Soyuz, ma'am. A silver angel. A savior who cleans our cosmodrome of them dirty rats with dirty wings. Hmm. Is this another Hans Wurlberg machine thing? I need to get to Arlbad, and quick. You go ahead, soldier. I'll stay here and keep you covered. I got the supplies here. Gotta keep an eye on them. Tricky job, too, you know? All these bottles. Okay, then. I was going to... Oh, forget it. It doesn't matter. He's too drunk to help anyone anyway. I am not drunk. I have drunk. A little. <laughs> he has... Well... He's not lying. He has... He has been hidden the bottle a little bit. Strange. Sure, I left a bottle or two around here. I gotta get some air. Wall's getting pretty tight. We'll think about that blast off later, huh? Are you okay, Colonel? Are you sure you're all right? Be careful! Don't lean out too far or you'll... Ah. Yeah, okay, sir. <laughs> I could have seen that coming. I don't think he's dead, though. He's just sleeping it up. But... We can now steal everything he owns. Yeah. Well, if he has anything we want, that is. Mm, let's see. Ah, there we go. Um... Uncle's grad, Cosmodrome, Project Program Management Committee. Object Program XP25, the Vorlberg Spring Loaded Launch Pad Project. So, yeah, he was here. Comrades, subsequent to inspections over the last year, our comrades of the Government Space Commission have reached an unfavorable conclusion concerning the Vorlberg project. Here are their findings. The Space Commission is convinced that Hans Vorlberg's research will yield no concrete results capable of serving the military interest of our country or of advancing its space program. It is considered that this project will only bring ridicule to our country and give a very poor image of our national space industry abroad. During the last few years, in a long succession of fruitless attempts, Comrade Vorberg has clearly demonstrated the limits to his knowledge of mechanical sciences. Consequently, we have ordered the irrevocable suspension of his program. It has been deemed counter-revolutionary and we now draw all collaboration with Comrade Vorberg. This decision, this decision has been approved by the Supreme Soviet, who adopted with a clear majority of the Central Committee Directive of April 15th. 
relating to the definitive cancellation of the variable Spring Loaded Launchpad project. The director announces the provisional closure of the Comical Squad Cosmodrome and reassignment of variable project test pilots to other domains. Comical Squad, 21st of April 1979. General Balia Mushin, commander of the Cosmodrome. Oh, this is quite a while ago. Okay, that's that. Oh, we have ourselves a key. Key. Okay. I am much more pleased now that we stole this stuff. But we will probably have to help him out a little bit. But we will do that in the next part. Thank you all for following along on my Siberia adventure. I hope you are having as good of a time as I. I would love if you hit those like and subscribe buttons and if I saw you again in the next part. But for now, it is time to say bye bye.